Psalm 62. Psalm 62. Pray as everyone is doing wonderful on today. Psalm 62. Hallelujah. How many people love the Lord? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, yes. I love the Lord and I won't take it back. Hallelujah. Psalm. 62, praise God for Mr. Cassie. He is doing double time on this morning. Amen. Yeah. 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 Got a little taste of our schedule. Yeah. Yeah. Psalm 62. And um, uh, verse 10. Let's look at verse 8. Psalm 62, verse 8. Hallelujah. You have it, say amen. amen. Trust in him at all times, ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Yes. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are alive. To be laid in the balance. They are altogether lighter than vanity. Trust not in oppression and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. First he left. God hath spoken once. Yes, sir. Twice have I heard this that power belongeth unto God. Amen. Again, God has spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belongeth unto God. Yes, sir. I want to talk today about power moves. Power moves. The phrase power moves has been used both in a negative and positive connotation. Of course, we want to use the positive, but let me give uh, some of the urban dictionaries definitions. Number one, the phrase power move means making decisions and carrying out plans to further your standing both socially and financially. All right. Secondly, power move can mean when one pulls a stunt that shows he has outdone others and retains complete control of the situation and dare anyone to challenge this. So it's true that many of us have made some power moves to show people where we stand and we're not going to take that. We're mm -hmm. not going to bend. We're not going to buckle. The mind is made up. Let it do right. Oh, yeah, there you go. We go sing Power moves that on the job. They're not going to make me do this. Wow. I'll show them. <laughs> we, we, we get our little crew about what we ain't going to do. And you know, sometimes it works. Sometimes it don't. Power moves in our families. I'll show them. Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. That. And yet the power moves even in church. I'm just not going to show up. We'll see what they do without me. 
talk about it. And I leave, watch it dry up. Mm, Jesus. Yes, sir. I'll get my crew together and we're going to shut it down. Wow. We just ain't going to do it. Wow. It goes from everything from Making macaroni, <laughs> the good and the nasty kind. I <laughs> guess somebody say nasty macaroni. Nasty macaroni. <laughs> Help us, God. You know, a church me bad macaroni can label the church. <laughs> <laughs> When I was little, we fellowship with the church. And uh, I passed old pastor. He shut the church down. I said, all of us go down to this place called Ruffin. They're going to feed dinner. And so we went into dinner. The mackerel was so nasty, nobody could eat it. And so we ended up with my mama saying, we're going down to Ruffin. I was in the place with the nasty mackerel. <laughs> I'm still under the impression somebody made that on purpose. <laughs> I had to. The fool will come. And, uh, and, and, and it's amazing that in God's kingdom mm -hmm. that people can somehow get the mindset I'm still going to control it, but it's God's kingdom. Teach this, Pastor. Yes, sir. Yes, yes, yes. Good and he word. made frivolous power moves. Crazy, I hate that. Don't you know if you don't step up to the plate, God's word will never go down and be destroyed. He will always raise up somebody else. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, God already got your reward. I already got your replacement. <laughs> Amen. And sometimes you know, we'll hold a replacement for a while to see if we're going to pull another power move ourselves uh -huh. because our faith is not consistent with the Word of God. Woo, help us, Pastor. So, let me give you a working definition. A working definition of a power move then is. God, who is sovereign and has all power, makes moves on behalf of faith-filled faith believers and shows that he will always be superior to anyone and anything that comes against you and retain complete control of any situation in your life and draws you in a place of authority where the enemy nor his agents can do you any harm. And expect other people to respond. Right. Don't be nobody now. You can't make nobody do nothing. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we, 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 we think that if we make enough fuss and, 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 and we, we bring enough exposure and we scream enough and we yell enough and get puffed up enough, somebody will be afraid of us. Yeah. But for faith-filled believers, we're not afraid of foolish people. Not at all. Amen. Not at all. Because every time the devil comes against God's people, according to Revelation, the devil is already cast out. So we tend to fight for nothing. Rather than stand in the place of security and authority. It's amazing how the devil will try to pull a power move through his agents just by how he looks at certain people and says certain things under the breath. Mm. It was ridiculous because when you understand the real power moves of God, 
He said, the mouth of every lie is going to be shut up. He says, whatever is done under cover in the dark is going to come to light. That's the word. And so the real power move is just for somebody who really believes God in the face of the foolishness that the enemy would try to, to pull is to stand there and watch God play out his word. Yes, sir. Look at somebody say, God has the last say so. Oh, God has the last say so. When we have something to say repeatedly, this is where we get thrown off. That when we have to say something over and over again, we tend to think, and even when it's a, a repetitious prayer, we tend to think that we are losing power. Okay, you know how it is uh, that when you tell your children to do something and, and, and they don't do it the first time, the second time, and then you get that little growl in your voice. I ain't talking to everybody, just, just to a few people. And, and then it escalates to when they're crazy enough to ask you why. And, and you say, because I say so. I ain't talking to everybody, just, just a few people. And see, it is at that moment you're saying, how do you even question my authority? You do what I say, when I say, and you better do it how I want it. Exactly. It don't take a long time getting together. Your mouth better not be stuck out and all they talk to you. If you ain't happy, you better act like you're happy and I'm not talking to anybody. Amen. So in a moment when we're challenged, we start to pull a power play ourselves. But I just believe, amen, that God is getting ready to take the work out of us. Yeah. Uh, because, uh, because we tend to get our emotions wrapped up and to go to a place where it doesn't need to go, but we just need to stand firm in the God of our salvation. And, and while we're trying to concoct and trying to put it together to put somebody else to a shame, uh, God says, if you can just believe me long enough, uh, this, this, this power move that I'm getting ready to make will leave the devil's mouth drop wide open. This power move uh, that I'm getting ready to do uh, will show up who's really on my side and who's on the devil's side. This power move uh, will begin to show that God is still a miracle worker. He's still a habit breaker. He's still a mind regulator. Yeah, yeah. and see the salvation of the Lord, I believe he's going to do the talking for me. I believe he's going to vindicate me. I believe he's going to expose those who need to be exposed. He's going to raise up those who need to be raised up and cast out those who need to be cast out. Because see, this power move, when God starts to move, it's no joke.
praying about that same situation, that same scenario, and then your conscience begin to work on you as uh, people begin to talk about or give God uh, repetitious, uh, repetitious prayers. And so what you got to understand is that uh, you're not necessarily giving God a repetitious prayer. You're just reminding God, I'm still believing you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if anybody got a prayer like that, you've been praying it for a while, and the devil trying to make you think, if it ain't happened by now, you're just blowing air and wasting time. But uh, I dare you to go to your prayer calls today and say, God, I still believe in you. Yes. Yeah. 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 It hadn't happened yet. It looked like you're ignoring me. Uh, and, and sometimes I get a little emotional with God. I start to cry and I start to wave in my hand. Y'all ain't talking to me. Uh, I want to go in intense travailing with God. So I put down a few meals. Y'all ain't talking to me. And I'm just going to intentionalize my faith and centralize my yeah. faith uh, to make sure that when I come out this time, uh, that God is going to do it just like I've been asking yeah. Him. And just like I've been leaving Him to do it. Uh, but I just want to encourage our five of you on the day because some of you somewhere in La La Land, but for five people who just about fell up with the devil. I'll go with God again and tell it on the devil uh, because I believe he's going to work it out. Now, yeah. now, now let me date myself. Uh, back uh, when I was growing up in elementary school, whenever the teacher would leave the classroom, uh, she would ask certain ones, the good people, to take names. Y'all know nothing about that. And uh, after you've been selected long enough to take names, whenever the teacher leaves and you're the one who's taking names, chances are you got to write the same names. Damn. Uh, yeah. <laughs> quiet. Uh, so, so at some point you're getting ready to pinpoint uh, where the devil is actually working. And, and, and when you pinpoint where the devil is actually working, it's not that it is the person uh, who is doing it, but uh, you recognize that there is a spirit operating in that person. You right? and so you don't know what to call that spirit, and so you go ahead and you take names. You say, Sister Boozle is letting the devil use her. <laughs> church, you still smile well, y'all ain't talking, even though you know the devil is using them uh, try to take you out uh, you still come purpose in your mind that this don't really have nothing to do with That's me right. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. But he doesn't allow me to use it. Exactly. Y'all ain't talking. Because if he allows me to use it, then I'll be just like them. Exactly. Amen. <sighs> What's this? So, 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 so when we tend to have to deal with the same thing over and over, we feel like we are slipping in power. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm not slipping. 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 As, as a matter of fact, God is building me. Yes. yes, sir. Uh, showing me how much I can take it. And showing me how much I can do it. And showing me that I can love in spite of hate all around. Yeah. 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 Uh, showing me that I can continue to tell the truth. Uh, when others want to still tell lies. Y'all ain't yep. talking to me. Uh, and, and so, praise God. Uh, we we, we, we got to understand that even in Joel, the Bible says, uh, and, and, and you will be able to see this. Watch this. Uh, Joel 33 and 14. You don't, you don't have to go there, but write it down. He says, For God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. My God. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, he said, God speaks once, and he says, yea, twice, yet man perceiveth it not. Now, see, if, if God has to say the same thing, over and over, and there is no response. Why do you feel like you're slipping in power? I know you're right. Because God is still the same God He was back then. Yes. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor. Neighbor. Just because I'm dealing with the same people. Just because I'm dealing with the same The same lie. The same lie. The same liar. The same liar. The same, same backbiter. The same backbiter. Doesn't mean. Doesn't mean I'm losing power. I'm losing power. Amen. Amen. Y'all gonna get that next week. It doesn't mean we're losing power. So, so, so now you don't have nothing to prove to the devil. Amen. I know you're right. Don't you think that if the devil tried to make God's people look bad, if they are God's people, he will always make them look better? Let me build my case. Romans 8. Romans 8. 16 and 17. He said, The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, and the children did heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. If be so, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may also glorify or be glorified together. Now, what, what, what uh, the apostle is telling us is that power belongs to God. And if power belongs to God, and if we belong to God, we have access to the same power. Yeah. We, we got access to the same power. He says, if we are heirs of that power, we are heirs of everything that belongs to God, and we are joint heirs with Christ. So if power belongs to God, then I have access and can tap into that power. Uh -huh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All you gotta do is live right. Yeah, let me do my case somewhere. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2. Y'all ready? Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians uh, chapter 2 says, uh, uh, verse 4 But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, <laughs> even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ, meaning by grace ye are saved, and have raised us up high together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Amen. Now, I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Once you know the power that is available to you, once you know the source of the power, whenever you are moved with the assignment of God, you are not alone. That's right. Because you have access.
access to the power of um, they, 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 there was a storm um, on the water, and uh, they, they were all afraid, and uh, the Bible says uh, Jesus came walking on the water, and he was walking so fiercely uh, that he was about to pass them. Okay. And uh, one gospel writer says he would have passed them uh, if he didn't hear their cry in the boat. And, and, and so they, they, they're crying out, boom, and they're a ghost. That's Jesus. Now he's doing some stuff I ain't never seen him do, but man, he's getting it in. And as he's getting it in, glory to God, they're yelling and screaming over here, over here, because they believe in the power of the one who is able to walk on water. I hear you. He walks on water over to the boat, and they're standing there in amazement, and some of them, their mouths are dropped wide open. They still do not believe what they're seeing. They say, yeah, this is Jesus, and he ain't sinking. Uh, Peter is the one that has, amen, this indication. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, every time I've been with him, uh, he didn't leave me on the side like just a spectator, uh, but he's even included me in getting the miracle and the job done. Uh -huh. So he doesn't see himself as an outsider, even though he's in trouble. Uh -huh. Come on, Pastor. And even when he's in trouble, he's still amazed at the things of God. And so while the storm is raging, and while uh, his co-workers are about to lose their mind and still shocked at what they're seeing, he's saying, now, Jesus, I see you walking on water. Now, if you want me to come out there, all you got to do is ask me to because I'll do everything you tell me. Yes, yes, yes. yes, sir. And he says, if you bid me to come, if you bid me to step out of the boat, I'll come out there with you. And he said one word to Peter. He said, come. Huh. And on that one word that he based on, he said, you know what? I'm already in trouble. Y'all don't hear me. Um, so here I go with another
fish. It's just like a prime, prime and a pump. We have some aggravated people who used to live next door to our house. And uh, y'all, y'all, y'all forgive me, I was just a child. Y'all, y'all forget I'm like, good Lord. They'll come to the door with their jugs. And they'd be like, can we get some water? Uh, we got the pour in our pump.
We make ourselves look even crazier. When we start addicted stuff, and this is the one that gets me. I'm gonna show them. Who do you think they are? Who do you think you are? Amen. Power of the Lord. To God. God. To God. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Part two of this, I'm going to go through a list of what the world says are studs. But for the believer, they are powerful. Wow. That, that saturates the spirit. There's a lot of people pulling some studs. But as believers, even though they call them studs, we make power. I really wish I could get all of that. But that's a little prep to keep you. Because I found out in my little experience, and when I found the side of the deal that I could do God's way, I get more results of praising the Lord than the of the end. Right. They'll be trying to prove anything to anybody. I found out that without him, I'm nothing anyway. Amen. Paul says, in him I live, I move. I have my being. He says, I'm nothing without him. Amen. And then Paul gave some of the people in church gave us some good advice. He says, follow me as I follow Christ. See, he could have easily said and put done anything he wanted to do because a lot of places where he evangelized, they didn't know anything about Jesus. So he could have just created another cult, another religion, some crazy stuff, but he didn't do that. He said, Keep moving. Keep walking with me. Keep moving with me as I keep walking after Christ. Well, I think, I think that's awesome. If, if you take the emphasis off of you, I just want to deliver a message. Y'all ready for this? The, the, the stuff you're going through and the craziness you're going through ain't got nothing to do with you. Absolutely. The devil hates the God on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. Yes, amen. And, and, and for those who got some struggles, listen, if, if the devil thought he had you, you would be comfortable in your struggle and your downfall. That's right. But because you keep getting back up, uh -huh. yes. because you keep making power moves, then, then he intensifies the attack. I, I got to beat the God out of her. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I got to worry the God consciousness out of her. Uh -huh. yeah. mm, glory to God. But, but here you are in church making another power move. Yes. I messed up and I know I was wrong. Yes, yes. But yeah, somebody said the devil man right now. The devil man right now. And, and you feel some kind of way because everything you did since the last time, I ain't even dealing with that. I'm dealing with the fact that even though some messed up joke happened, uh, uh, yeah. the moment you got your clothes on, the devil went somewhere straight. Mm. Because you just made a power move.
to be ready. Let those hands to the Lord. Let me empower you for just a second. Y'all ready for this? By you standing here, you have already made the enemy nervous. Amen. By you making up your mind, I'm coming to this altar, you have already made the enemy nervous. So I want you to know you've already won round one. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah. And as you have already won round one, I dare you to stand in your victory and don't take down in the name of Jesus. to raise me about any situation. 